the internet, the information superhighway. It's changed the way we learn, the way we work, and the way we play games. But will this marvel of information access kill major aspects of Star Citizen gameplay before it even gets into our hands? I've been wanting to make a video about this for quite a while, but there's some recent information that came out from CIG that spurred me to go ahead and make this video, but we'll get to that in a second. First, let's break down what I'm talking about. There is so much information that we can acquire about the gameplay that is outside of the game itself, it could destroy the fun of experiencing and playing Star Citizen. Let's take one example, the old original Jump Town. Now I'm going way back, before Jump Town was even Jump Town, when it was only identified as a small, unnamed outpost that you could only get to by picking up one mission that only showed up occasionally in your mission list. When it first came out on the scene, it was somewhat rare and a special thing to find in the game. You went there to pick up a mission box and only if you took your time and got curious enough to start poking around did you find that there was a trade console nestled off to the side that had some rather unusual goods in it that were marked by skull and crossbones and somewhat questionable names to let you know that it was something unique, these illegal goods. Back when it was first introduced, you felt like you had found a secret, something special and you knew other players would be finding it the same way, but it would take time, and many folks going there that might be solely focused on completing the box mission might not even notice the special console. Before it was a well-known location, I put out a series of videos about smuggling around these commodities. It was actually one of my first YouTube series on Star Citizen, but I expressly never described how to get there because I didn't want to take away the experience of discovery for other players. But it wasn't long before all that changed. Pretty soon, there was a string of YouTube videos describing exactly how to navigate to this point without the need for the mission. Others posted information about exactly what goods were there, and how much they cost to buy, how much they cost to sell, where to sell them, and before long, there was a conga line of ships running back and forth between Jump Town and Grim Hex as commonplace. Now I know some really good gameplay came out of Jump Town, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about how it went from a point of obscurity to one of the most visited locations in the verse in just a few weeks, rather than something discovered and evolving organically. The internet put a flashing sign advertisement over Jump Town. Make the most money doing one simple thing. And I saw players logging into the game for the first time with the first question they would ask in global chat as, how do I get to Jump Town? The internet and publication of Jump Town had removed all the mystique, all the discovery. Most of what Jump Town had to offer that was special in those areas had been removed. Let's switch gears and fast forward to what we have today and what's been available for a while around cargo trading. If you want to trade cargo and you want to gather some information about the commodities, there's a couple ways to go about doing it. You can fly to different outposts, see what they're selling, purchase some of the commodities, go to the different centers of trade and see what they're offering as far as prices, compare prices, create a journal of information based on your travels around the verse, and experience the gameplay. You can even formulate your own trade routes based on your own discoveries from actually playing the game. Or you can look it up on Galog. Now I'm not putting down the people that put together these kinds of sites and mine information from the game files or in other ways aggregate this kind of information outside of the game. In fact, I think being able to do that kind of thing is quite brilliant but a more pressing concern occupies my superior intellect. As the verse gets bigger and continues to expand, as more solar systems with planets are introduced, with even more points of interest, manually traveling to points A through Z to gather that kind of information 
would wind up being a rather daunting task, but it does take away from the potential gameplay that's available. If as a cargo trader, you needed to spend some time and effort putting together your trade information and trade routes, rather than just looking up the answer on the internet, it would give players something more to do. So now enters CIG with hints at some future gameplay concepts. There was a very popular post in Spectrum on the AI blades for ships, and one of them dealt with trade. It said, allows traders to view buy-sell prices in different places in the universe while on the move, rather than having to be at a trade station. Right now, you can't even know if a given location will buy your goods or not, how much total of that commodity they might be willing to purchase, or the maximum of a given commodity that might be available. Even traveling all over the verse to gather your own information doesn't reveal that kind of detail, except through trial and error. So it's no wonder that people turn to the internet as an external application to find out if a commodity can be bought or sold at a location, and what at least is the potential amount that could be traded there. But here's the catch. Even these apps available on the internet won't tell you if a location has already been saturated with product and won't buy anymore or if a location has been bought out. To get a full picture of trade data, you need a combination of what's currently available in-game and what is external. But is providing a complete picture of all trade data good gameplay? Where's the self-discovery? CIG needs to incorporate some balance between providing information to the player inside of the game while still offering a sense that you're building your own portfolio of trade information. And I think there's a couple of things that'll significantly contribute to that. One is Tony Z's dynamic economy. Right now, supply and demand, prices and capacities are somewhat static values that only fluctuate very slightly. When prices are driven more by a dynamic economy, external applications will be much less reliable. And beyond just the AI blades, if we get a Wall Street-like readout of what locations are buying and selling which commodities, what are the current prices, how much of a given commodity they want, then I for one would probably use that system in game. That kind of up to the minute trade information is going to be most accurate and only available in game. And I envision this is a scenario where I would need to be at one of the major trading centers to be able to get that kind of detailed and live information, which is perfectly fine. If I'm not at a major trade station and I still want good information, then that is potentially where data trading comes in, or perhaps the AI blades. This might seem particularly true for the illegal commodities that aren't recognized on the regular Wall Street trading readouts. You might need to purchase the data regarding contraband on where it's being bought and for how much through data trading. This is good gameplay, particularly for something like the Star Runner. Here's a ship that's multi-purpose, but largely designed around data trading and carries a little reputation for being used in more subversive ways to move goods or data that the authorities may not approve of. Trading information of these illegal commodities would be an ideal candidate for the data trading. I can easily imagine a star runner visiting the less reputable locations, gathering intel about their products, and selling that information to smugglers. Your gameplay is not centered as much around hiding your cargo, but encrypting your computer's data from authorities. You build a reputation as a reliable source of information. You're always looking over your shoulder for other criminals that want nothing more than to disable your ship, board it fighting hand to hand, and steal it for its valuable repository of data that now spreads across multiple systems in the verse. But then, in comes the internet. Somebody decided to open a Discord channel or a Google Doc for 
open posting of illegally traded commodities for everyone to freely exchange. No one is interested in buying your data in-game when it's available instantly through a Google search. Effectively, one of the primary utilities of your Star Runner is dead. This could easily be extended to other data trading. It's been well stated that exploration and finds made in the verse will likely be a major source of data that can be traded. It might be in support of mining where locations of rich mining areas or veins are for sale. It could be locations of smaller jump points that smugglers and pirates may be highly interested in. It could be derelict locations for salvage that reclaimer and vulture owners would gladly pay for to avoid long periods of searching. Maybe a new small gas cloud that would be of great value to a starfarer owner. Or maybe even whole new Delamar-like planetoids that are ripe for a constellation or Carrick owner to spend days or weeks scanning and mapping where they can, in turn, sell even more data to would be purchasers. But all of that gameplay potentially dies when the YouTube video comes out titled How to Find the Five Wreck Junkyard on Pyro 2. Now I'm sure a whole new bit of gameplay evolves as the junkyard becomes a hot spot for salvagers, but what about the poor data trader? His information is essentially useless when 10,000 players instantly know about the location. And that is the source of this video's title. Will the internet and the information available to players kill Star Citizen and some of its gameplay? I'm not sure I have a clear answer to that. The internet has and will continue to be a source of spoilers for many games. But there's a difference between someone being stuck for days in a game, unable to find a key to open a door, and finally yielding to look up what to do on the internet, and making information that is used for day-to-day -day gameplay openly available. I think some of the commonly used applications today will become obsolete as more gameplay and utilities are introduced, but I'm particularly concerned about data trading. And I think CIG will have to think it through very carefully to keep that career from being superseded by the internet. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on the topic. Do you think CIG will be able to design things so in-game information is a sole necessity? Do you want to discover things on your own? Would you rather have everything the game has to offer just openly exposed? I really look forward to seeing what people think about the subject. Like, subscribe, use my referral code and all that jazz, and don't forget to check out the ReadCast podcast available at the link in the description.